So how will England under Borthwick set up and play? So welcome back to BD Rugby. And um, today I wanted to discuss about how England might play and set up under Borthwick and Sinfield and, and now Nick Evans, um, head of the Six Nations. And I think by doing that, what I've done is had a little look at the styles that Borthwick has kind of the teams he's been part of. So particularly looking at Leicester and maybe some of his involvement with England. Um, interestingly, the same with Nick Evans and some of the theories and philosophies that he has imparted at Harlequins and trying to think about, well, based on those influences, how will England look to set up and play going forwards? I've been less in influenced by the selection that's happened this week and more about the kind of previous play. So the first sort of thing would be, I think we're going to see an increase in kicking, but I think it's going to be far more purposeful. I think there was a period in time uh, maybe the last two years with Eddie Jones, where England went into a, a sort of situation where if, if after two or three phases they weren't getting anywhere, they kicked the ball, but often kicked without purpose. It wasn't a tactic. It was almost like we have to kick and give rid of the ball because if not, we will get turned over. And I think some of the narrative around that was that statistically that's the case. But as a fan, that sort of links to a boring play and probably doesn't support a lot of the instincts of the, the current players. I think we'll probably see a lot of box kicking. Um, I think we'll see, but I think we'll also see a lot of kicks to compete. Um, and even though, you know, Harlequins themselves are, are renowned for throwing the, ball, throwing the ball around, which we'll touch on later, you know, they did in their title winning season kick the ball. You know, they were one of the top kicking teams, as were Leicester last year. And I don't think that's changed. I think you just you just have to kick well. I think the second one was that there's a feature about big ball carriers. If you think about both Leicester last year in particular and Harlequins, both rely on a focal point and, and rely on big carriers. Leicester, you know, utilised Nandolo, who had been part of the squad for a while. And as soon as Borthwick came in, they used him a lot more off first phase, so using their wingers off first phase. Similarly, Harlequins will use um, Andre Esterhausen in a similar fashion. So they use him as a point of contact um, to get to get forward momentum and to play off. And I don't see, see England being any different here. It obviously depends on uh, personnel and who they can use. But um, you can see in some of the selection that he selected this week that there are natural ball carriers in there. However, I think the differentiation is it doesn't have to be someone who's naturally big. So those two examples are in actually big men. I think that also they will rely on people who are both got good footwork at the line and people who have a willingness to kind of keep going. You know, I always think of examples like someone like um, Tompkins at Saracens and Wales. He's a guy who plays 12 effectively, not a big chap, but he actually will make ground and commit players just because of his footwork and his sheer willingness to continue to do that role. Um, and I think there's a lot of examples, perhaps someone like Caden Murley, who could could do that equally. And I mean, Jack Null, who's not been picked, again, could do that role. Uh, and perhaps we'll see someone like Hassel Collins, if he plays, coming in off the wing a lot more, you know, in the earlier phases um, in set moves. So I think that that's something that we'll see. And, and I think that's a slight differentiation. I think the other thing is looking at we'll see a lot more increase in offloading. I think this links to a little bit around um, Nick Evans is quick, a lightning quick ball theory. I think, you know, it often it's about trying to offload the ball in, in order to try and create space and give um, opportunity. You know, it's no, there's no surprise that France have one of the quickest ruck speeds, but I think they're also a team that are willing to offload around contact um, to change the point of contact, which then naturally will often make the ball a bit quicker to use. I think interestingly linked to that is one of the philosophies that I heard from some from some discussion from some of the Harlequins players is that Nick Evans is a very much around, and I'm not quite sure how they put it, but it was something like style over shape. And I think the, the theory goes is that they play to a shape, which will support probably, you know, your traditional thoughts around how Borthwick comes at the game, around clarity, shape and structure. But that he, if the, they allow the player the freedom that if that instinctively, if something's on, then they will play heads up rugby. And I 
um, from I think it was from the discussion with Caden Murley this week, I heard that they suggested that they actually Harlequins actually train in certain ways to kind of really encourage that heads up rugby where they play on a larger pitch with smaller players to encourage that looking for spaces and gaps. And I kind of think that's quite exciting as England fan that we may see some of that. I think linked to that as well is one of the criticisms of praying for freedom is that you may well make more mistakes. Interestingly, some of the discussion I've seen or heard from Kevin Sinfield, he's very clear around the fact that people won't be punished for making errors. And I think that's quite a good message. I think those all those things align. So you've got you've got people that are talking about structure, but then around the edges, you've got that heads up freedom. But then you've got people that they're not going to be berated if they make mistakes. And I think that perhaps some of that was lacking in the last regime. And I think however you think about Eddie, and I think he still is quite a, an excellent rugby brain, but perhaps with the players that were coming through, we weren't really using them correctly and perhaps giving them that freedom and that um, sort of social protection, psychological protection, which you know often great leaders do provide. I think even though they're the key styles, I think there's two things that underpin this regime. And I think you can already see that. I think set piece is going to be important. It probably always is, but I think particularly the line out. I mean, whatever you hear about Borthwick is he's a bit of a line out noise. He focuses on this. I think my understanding is even as even as the head guy, he's still going to be on the training paddock focusing on the line out. So I can't see England struggling you know, line out like they did in those last couple of tests that we saw where, you know, they're throwing in on the 22 and getting ball stolen, which, you know, at this level, a line out close to the line is an absolute weapon. And we've got players in that squad who can really, you know, people like George McGuigan, that's his career is based off, you know, the rolling ball off a line out. So I, I would expect that to be an, a weapon. Be interesting on that point, though, to see how, what the philosophy is around Kicking points or going to the corner. You can see within international teams at the moment, there's a little bit of a contrast around that. Um, you know, the classic Woodward style about building your points, whereas some, perhaps even Ireland, are a little bit more aggressive when it comes to kicking to the corner. So it'd be interesting, I think, to see what the, the flow is from the England squad around that point. And then the last point, which has kind of been branded around by everybody, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm aware that I'm jumping on the bang round, is around clarity. And I think everything I'd heard prior to Borthwick being part was that Borthwick was very clear with his messaging. I think Sinfield, particularly from his rugby league background and perhaps similarities to Sean Edwards, is it's all about simple, clear messaging. So I think the players will have a lot more clarity. And I think to have that, that shape has got to exist. And so they've got to, and that, and that allows you to bring players in and out, which perhaps goes against the whole unstructured play, which we've been focused on for the last two years. Um, and I think that that will be really key. But as you can see, that maybe the elements that Nick Evans brings into that is that freedom around that clarity. So you have that shape, but if you can see some opportunity, then that shape, you have permission to break away from that shape. And I think that's quite... So we will start to see, hopefully as fans... We will get a bit of an identity of what England are trying to do, both in attack and defence. But then also we will get that bit of flair and we'll actually see some of these players succeed. So I'm hopeful that, you know, the the bones and the foundations are there. I still think there'll probably be opportunities to bring other coaches in and consultants. But I think that the three guys they got there are, are really good. Um, and I think I'm very excited looking forward to this um, Six Nations squad. So they're just my views on the way I think England will set up and play. It'll be interesting to see whether any of that comes through or whether there's other features that come through. But I hope that, you know, we do play with a bit more identity, um, but offer enough of flexibility so we're not predictable and so that we can be, you know, analysed by some of these um, superb coaches that are now in other nations uh, and played against. So look out for more from my other videos. I'll be doing more videos around selection and some of the kind of key themes that come up. Um, thank you again for watching. And um, yeah, come back to this, come back to the site soon. Thank you.